Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be talking about the Samsung Odyssey head-mounted display, which is the flagship head-mounted display from uh, Microsoft uh, partner uh, Samsung. Now, Microsoft's head-mounted displays have kind of come out with a baseline uh, set of features. Um, they are supposed to run on lower powered machines compared to what things like the Vive or the Oculus Rift require, which means that these head mounted displays could actually work on a pretty decent end laptop. Um, on Windows 10, you can actually download an app from the Windows Store that tells you if your computer is uh, ready for uh, the virtual reality headsets, <clears throat> which is nice and convenient. Now, the, the, uh, the Samsung Odyssey um, is the flagship for a couple of reasons. It has uh, the best resolution of any of the devices that are available, and it has built-in audio here, so these uh, little ear pads can slide up and down, and they can kind of move around a little bit to give you stereo audio. These are not removable, unfortunately, so if one breaks, you have to send the whole thing in for repairs, and there is no external jack that allows you to plug in your own headset, so it's kind of these little ear flaps or nothing. Uh, it does have a built-in microphone down here at the bottom, so you can issue voice controls when you are actually using the headset. Um, it has uh, volume controls down here, some buttons that you can use, and it does have this little wheel here which adjusts the interpupillary distance. Now the interpupillary distance uh, helps you kind of adjust um, the specificity of the centers of the lenses to coincide with uh, your eyes. So if your eyes are closer or farther apart, you can actually adjust it for a better view. Now, in order to put this on, um, you can pull this visor out just a little bit, but it springs back in place, which is good and bad. When you're putting it on your face, you kind of want to pull it out a little bit so it doesn't scrape you know, down your face. But uh, the fact that it only goes as far as, you know, this this bracket allows means that uh, if you can't get this um, resting close enough, then this will not seal. And that's kind of uh, one of the problems that I've run into thus far, that when you put this on, there is a certain degree of light that comes in underneath through here. Uh, at first, I thought it was because I wore my glasses being rather thick, uh, that they would be um, kind of pushing the uh, the mat the, uh, the the padding off of my face, but when I did put it on without glasses, I had the same issue. So it's either I'm not wearing it right or my head's too big. Uh, the nose piece right here is uh, two little flaps of silicone, which kind of fit on either side of your nose and are intended to kind of block the light, but uh, I, I feel that the PSVR headset doesn't actually, uh, does actually a, a better job than, uh, than these guys do right here. Um, in order to fit this on your head, uh, you can pull out the visor, but you can also use a dial that's right here on the back of the headset to kind of dial it, uh, dial it bigger. And then once you have it on your head, you ratchet it in closer so that it gives a, a, a snug fit. You got to be careful though, because if you tighten it too much, you're going to give yourself a headache. Um, this thing is relatively light, but once it's on your head, uh, all of the weight is actually right here on the forehead, and it's pulling kind of like upwards on the back of your head. So uh, it, it it does kind of give you a headache if you tighten it too much, and it can also actually give you neck pain if you wear it for too long. Uh, I did read, however, that someone said they wore it more like a crown, meaning they kind of rested it on their head and gave it a little bit of tightening, um, but that seemed to help with the, um, the placement of the, uh, the face mask around their face so that they didn't have the, the light bleed. And once this is attached to your head, uh, one of the disconcerting things is that when you, when you try to release it, um, unlike the PlayStation version where there was a button in the back, uh, you have to kind of dial this thing back. Once it's you know, kind of got the pressure of your head, uh, dialing this thing back actually makes a really loud ratcheting sound and it kind of sounds like it break. So something I have to be careful of. Um, it does come with a six foot cord and it does have a nice bracket here, so it does keep this kind of in place. And there's also a, a little bit of a bracket kind of right here that also helps route the wire around the inside of the uh, 
around the inside of the headset. So that's the headset. Um, one final thing is that it does have two sensors here right in the front. And that's important because this is an inside out technology, meaning uh, there are no external sensors. All of the uh, sensors actually are contained right here in the faceplate and they somehow, I guess, magically beam outwards and are received through these two little camera sensors. And that's important because it comes with these two wand controllers. One, and two. Now these are handed, so they are basically, uh, there's a left and a right, and you can't switch the two. Um, so whether you're left or right-handed, you can use either one, but you're kind of stuck using one in each hand. Now, the controller itself has a Windows button, which does things like uh, you would expect the Windows key on your keyboard to do. It does have a little uh, menu, hamburger button is what they call it. It has a touch-sensitive directional pad. So the, you use this uh, to slide your finger around in order to scroll up and down windows. Um, it also is a directional pad, so it, it does click. Uh, and you also have a directional stick here, and this is primarily used for moving around in an environment. On the side, you have a little clicker button. I haven't figured out what that's for, but you also have a trigger. So when you actually take action, uh, you hold it and you pull the trigger in order to take the action that you want to take. Um, one little kicker that I found in order to pair this uh, with your Bluetooth dongle on your PC or, or on your laptop, you turn it on, set your PC to discover new things, and then there's a little tiny, tiny button right there that you got to push and hold in order to get it to be recognized by your system. So you do end up getting one of these. That's something to keep in mind. Now, this uh, the cup here, if you'll notice, has all of these little dots. When this is turned on, uh, the dots light up. And the dots are used by the sensors in the headset for tracking. So the thing about the, I guess, the Oculus and, and the Vive is that even when your controllers are outside of the, the view of the headset, they're still tracked. Um, with the sensors being in the front of the headset, that means when these are out of sight, basically the headset loses track of where the where the wands are. Um, a lot of people can kind of complain about that. A lot of other people say, well, you know, it's not so much of a big deal if it's kind of outside of the range. You know, you can kind of, it's got a good peripheral vision so that you really have to kind of move it someplace significantly out of range in order for it to lose track of it. So um, overall, um, the fidelity on... Uh, on the visuals for the uh, for the display is is pretty good, um, significantly clearer than the PSVR. I can I can say that with absolute certainty, but also with mathematical certainty since you can just compare the box values. <clears throat> um, the tracking for the controls is actually pretty good. Um, what we'll see later when we when we look inside the uh, the cliff house is that you can actually see these represented as actual um, items in the virtual world and how moving them around actually allows you to um, use a, a pointer that that a virtual pointer that that extrudes from the center of this and also um, allows you to interact with things. So let's get out of the real world and head into the virtual world and we'll see what the cliff house has to offer. Okay, so this is us actually inside what they call the Cliff House. Uh, this comes pre-installed uh, with the Windows 10 Creators Update, which, uh, if you've received it, actually uh, comes with the support for the mixed reality uh, devices. So if you've gotten your update, uh, you have, I believe, the Cliff House. Uh, however, you can't access it unless you hack some uh, registry values uh, even then, um, you can only look at the mixed reality settings in Windows. You need the headset to actually get the house. So <clears throat> what, I've, what we're looking at here is a view of my desktop. Uh, the reason why we have this is so that I can see it. Um, basically, my entire view is of the cliff house. So in order to monitor what's going on, I put my desktop here on the wall. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll actually come back to this later, but the first thing I want to do is to show you the, um, the two uh, controllers in, um, 
in virtual reality here. So these are exactly as shown in reality. Um, you can see that they've got the lights going on here, um, which is more of a reference. And if you listen carefully, you can actually hear me banging them together and you can see them um, represented very well here in uh, the virtual space. Uh, they are laid out exactly as they are in real life with the uh, Windows button, the hamburger button, the D-pad uh, and the thumbstick, the weird button, strange side button, the triggers, and when you look at the battery compartment, you actually see battery life uh, here in the virtual world, which is kind of cool. Emanating from the centers of these controllers, you've got these two lines, which if you look really closely, you can see uh, are animated, which is kind of cool. Um, they terminate in pointers up there on the ceiling right now. And uh, we can actually uh, use these um, to kind of point at the things we want to interact with. Um, in order to interact with something, we then pull the trigger and it allows us to move uh, things around. So we can put things basically anywhere we want to. Uh, I can put this here, um, point and click the trigger. Uh, we'll get our uh, weather report. So as you can see here, it is a balmy 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, here in my hometown, which is kind of cool. So, um, <clears throat> I don't even know what I did. Hmm. Apparently moved it. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so the uh, these controllers allow us to interact with various things, but they also allow us to move. Uh, one of the big problems with uh, virtual reality is that people tend to get motion sick when they have uh, FPS style movements. So the the solution for that has been to allow people to teleport. And for a game, um, it's kind of a little weird. Uh, when Skyrim VR was first demoed, uh, that was kind of the, uh, the way that uh, the developers had allowed you to move around uh, Skyrim. And it, to me, it was kind of a little weird. It kind of takes some of the realism out of it, but I understand why they do it. Uh, because these are the only controllers that we have here in the house, the only way we can do uh, move around is to teleport. So to do so, what we do is we uh, take the, uh, the thumbstick here, we push it forward, which creates kind of an arc, and then we can uh, put it where we want to be, and then we just let it go. So now we are on a, another section of the house see ourselves over there again and what i'm doing here is by moving side to side with the thumbstick i can rotate myself around my current location so you can move to where you need to be and although you can look around in 360 degrees uh, sometimes it is just easier to sit stationary and uh, reorient yourself using the thumbstick so we can move around the house pretty easily um, just by teleporting ourselves to where we need to be. Unfortunately, it also does allow us to get uncomfortably close to certain elements in the house. Um, but we cannot actually go inside the wall. We can get up close to the wall, but we can't go inside the wall. That's pretty good. Um, here in the house, however, uh, you'll notice that we do have all of these uh, gigantic billboards here on the wall, and we did see that uh, we had the, um, <clears throat> the desktop view on the other side of this wall, as well as the weather panel. Uh, this is a representation of the Microsoft Store, and so we could actually go in and take a look at all of the uh, mixed reality uh, offerings here on the Microsoft Store itself. Now, in order to get through this, you'll notice here the trackpad. When I point at the screen, the trackpad turns into an up and down arrow. When I move my finger um, along the trackpad on the actual physical device, you'll see the point of pressure um, as well as where it, um, you know, where I'm pointing. And that allows me to theoretically scroll up and moving up. So, uh, you can actually do this if we say Skyworld. So here it's working a little better. So we can actually scroll up and down a page. So if we're on a web browser, we can actually use a web browser here. Um, 
to scroll through, you know, a web page such as this, you can do that. So that's, uh, let's see, so that's that. Let's take a look at some other options. What we can do here in the house. So this is the media room, <laughs> media room, quote unquote. Um, it has a nice motif here. Um, and we can also watch uh, movies and videos here using the 360 degree offerings. But one of the cool things is that we can actually pull, <laughs> pull the walls off. So you could actually uh, replace this with something like say Netflix or uh, Hulu, and you could actually have a nice little viewing experience. Um, you can't actually, I don't think sit in the, uh, in the chair. You can actually stand on the chair, quote unquote, but, you know, I mean, for all intents and purposes, we are sitting on the couch under the nice starry sky. So what we have here is um, basically, uh, let's see, let's see what we have. All right. So movies and TV, we want to look at the 360 degree video. So these videos here allow us to actually have a 360. They're specially designed using 360 degree cameras. And uh, we can actually, uh, you know, see some really cool stuff. So uh, GoPro VR swimming with wild dolphins in the ocean. Now, what you see here is different from what I see. What I see is a 360 degree offering. And As I'm moving around. Oh, that's just creepy. I can look around. <laughs> but the, the weird thing about VR is that Next it kind of time, freaks me out. Next time, try using your voice to leave a game. Just say, go to start. Okay. You open the start menu, say, go to start again. So in order, to, one of the um, ways we can uh, interact with things here in the in virtual reality is by the working um, is by using the Windows menu. And when we push the Windows button, we get a uh, menu that floats up just right in front of us, wherever we are. So when we turn around, no matter where we look, there it is. Um, this is kind of like a really quick way to get around to different applications. Um, you'll notice that because we have the desktop over here, we've got a web browser over there. We have the Microsoft store there. Um, this allows us to generate panels, uh, that we can place on walls. Uh, so it does show that we're on ethernet. It shows our volume level. And we can do things like take pictures, uh, still images. We can record video from within here, although in 2D. And the preview is, is what um, actually is showing, um, allows us to show what's... Uh... So, of course, because it has a microphone built into the headset, when I actually said the right command word, it fired off that application, which is which is what just happened. So we have uh, the browser, the store, we have a photo gallery, we have uh, the Microsoft Assistant, Cortana, we have the feedback hub and movies and TV, which is what we saw there. But we can go into our uh, menu and we can see other uh, things that we might actually want to have. So for example, the calendar, we can have it here if we really wanted to. Um, we can actually take this and somehow put it on the wall. Ah, there we go. It sticks to the wall. So I can leave my calendar here. So whenever I'm in the house, I can come over here and I'll say, oh, well, it's Veterans Day this weekend. Work with, you know, certain elements. That um, the... To close an app faster, look at it and then say close. Mm -hmm. Try it out. So 
Cortana every now and then will will break in with some uh, useful. Um, you can do things like uh, get some of these other um, apps in here, such as Learn Mixed Reality. You can also get uh, your music. So forth. Uh, we do have Netflix and Plex, which we can put. Wall. So as, again, we could put this in a dedicated room, and we can actually watch. Uh, you know what we have uh, on Netflix. Just, uh, I don't really know how useful it is to actually spend time with this headset on watching for two hours, unless you have specifically designed VR content to watch. You can do it, I guess, if you really want to. Uh, so one of the things that uh, this, these Windows headsets uh, allow you to do is what they call room scale VR. Now I'm sitting here in a chair in front of my PC, so I don't actually have to worry about room scale. But if I were to stand up, for example, to play uh, Space Pirate Trainer, I would definitely want to stand up uh, in a clear area and, uh, and and play the game. The only problem being is that with the headset on, I don't know exactly where I am in the room. So the room adjustment allows you to set up boundaries boundaries um, in your physical in, in the virtual world that correspond to f the physical space that you have available to you. So you would use room adjustment and, and somehow designate the, uh, the, your, your working area, for example. And what would happen is that when you are in your game or environment, you would see uh, boundaries on the floor that indicate kind of where your physical locations are. So I'm surrounded by desks, basically, in my basement, so I would definitely not want to walk into a desk while I'm, I'm playing the game. So when you do room adjustment, you can actually set up those boundaries to prevent you from hurting yourself. Um, okay, so th this is the setup experience. Um, we can, we'll, we'll place this here. And uh, this is the, one of the first things that shows up when you actually plug the headset in and come to the house for the first time. So basically all it is is showing you how to um, more or less interact with uh, the environment. Or looks off, move it with the touchpad. Okay, so here um, we have just a regular open world. And in this case, we're gonna use the voice command. So we'll say next. Or not, we'll just point to the chat. The microphone, microphone seems rather fiddly sometimes. All right, so the uh, one thing I did want to try is the, is this, the hollow tour. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, okay. So let's take a look at hollow tour. Turn down the volume because I can't even hear myself talk. Welcome to Hollow Tour, the experience where you get to travel without limits. My name's Melissa, and I'll be your personal tour guide. Let's go see Rome in real life. So, virtual tourism is a thing that uh, VR is supposed to be. Your eyes. We're actually really standing in Piazza Navona in Rome, a city that's been home to emperors and artists, popes and, and gladiators. Guy. And as you can see, lots and lots of tourists. Okay, so <laughs> rather than uh, give you the tour of the Hollow Tour application, uh, we'll just kind of leave it at that. So basically this is, uh, this is kind of what the, um, what the Cliff House has to offer it it's kind of a glorified launcher more or less um so you can come in here you can post a lot of things on your walls supposedly there's a way where you can actually um get some of these guys um forget exactly how to get them um but uh you can actually get some additional <laughs> furniture and decorations into your house but um, it's really not much of anything. It's a good experience and a good way to allow you to mess around with, 
um, the locomotion and using the menus and things like that. Um, but aside from that, it's not actually something really to use a lot. Um, when Microsoft gets its um, Steam VR implementation working, then uh, I'm not exactly sure where the Cliff House will factor into it. Um, probably won't factor into it very much. Uh, but right now it's kind of a glorified application launcher. So that's pretty much uh, what we've got thus far. Um, maybe once I do get uh, the room scale stuff set up, um, I'll do a little video, I guess, using Space Pirate Trainer or something else. Um, we can actually get a, a, a real sense of how VR act, uh, works. And because we do have the... Um, uh, the ability to record it here using XSplit, um, we can actually uh, watch me while I do spastic flailing around. So uh, I'm going to shut this down now, and I'm going to see if I can't process this video for upload. Thank you for watching.